Our book today in the Tom Hartman Book Club is Animal Kind, Remarkable Discoveries About Animals and Revolutionary Ways to Show Them Compassion by Ingrid Newkirk and Jean Stone. This is from the very first chapter. Researchers at Germany's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology were dumbfounded. The excitement wasn't over a new fossil or the discovery of a previously unknown human ancestor. It was over Rico, a border collie. In experiments conducted in 2004, the very normal-seeming 10-year-old canine had learned to fetch more than 200 objects on command, and moreover, remembered them all a month later. Determined to discover the lim lengths of, limits of Rico's abilities, the research team subjected him to a battery of cognitive tests that revealed astounding problem-solving abilities. Rico could easily retrieve from another room items he was familiar with, but when told to retrieve a new item, one he had never heard before, Rico correctly deduced that the unknown name must correspond with an unknown object and correctly retrieved it. The Border Collie's cognitive abilities were subs subsequently compared to that of apes, dolphins, parrots, and eventually human children. Researchers often end up comparing their animal subjects' intelligence to humans, but is intelligence truly easy to compare animal to human or even animal to animal? If Rico could use the process of elimination to correctly fetch a tennis ball, does that make him smarter than an Arctic tern who journeys 44,000 miles each year between the North and South Poles? Is a piano-playing cat more intelligent than a chimpanzee who shares 99% of her DNA with humans and can learn sign language? Comparing the intelligence of animals is, in fact, no easier than comparing the intelligence of humans. Who's smarter, Aristotle or Plato? Newton or Einstein? Monet or Manet? The, the red-lipped batfish or Chinese gi giant salamanders? The Indian elephant or the African elephant? In the end, ranking the relative intelligence of animals is a futile exercise. What's more, a recent study found that less than 15% of the estimated 9 million species on Earth have been discovered. Who knows what fantastical creatures reside at our ocean's crushing depths, soar high in the stratosphere, or creep deep in the densest jungles? What fantastic intelligence do they display? Or, more so, what fantastic intelligence we can't even comprehend? We often consider intelligence as the only factor in determining which animals deserve compassion and which don't. Yet we're still so limited in our understanding of human intelligence that it makes little sense to calibrate our animal brethren based on how similar their brains are to ours. Or perhaps you could say it's simply not an intelligent way to determine importance. The goal of this book is not to merely question that superiority or to show that animals think and act like us. It's to show how they do not and to honor those differences. How can anyone compare the mental faculties of a gibbon vaulting through the forest with a giant blue whale singing through the deepest oceans? Different animals excel at, excel at different actions. As we'll see in this book, animals think, navigate, communicate, love, and play in extraordinarily unique ways. However, for many years, scientists believed that intelligence was indeed all that mattered when it came to animals, and that intelligence consisted of a continuum with humans at the most developed end. Every other species could fit neatly into that spectrum, a concept heralded by the great naturalist Charles Darwin, who wrote in his 1871 book, The Descent of Man, that, quote, the difference in mind between man and the higher animals, great as it is, certainly is one of degree and not of kind, end quote. In essence, Darwin meant that because all animals share a common ancestor, they also share the same toolkit of mental abilities, but at different levels. Not a new idea. 2,400 years ago, Aristotle presented his idea of natural ladder, or scala natura. Uh, like Darwin, Aristotle advanced that all life could be conveniently ranked with lesser animals, like worms on one end, intermediate animals, like dogs and cats in the middle, and higher animals, such as monkeys and humans, at the far end. During the Middle Ages, Christian theologians expanded on Aristotle's teachings with the great chain of being, a hierarchical scale that began with God at the very top, followed by angels, humans, other animals, plants, and then minerals. Each layer of the chain also had its own hierarchy. Among humans, for instance, kings, aristocrats, and other noblemen were at the top, while peasants were relegated to the bottom. The highest ranking animals were large carnivor carnivores like lions and tigers, who were untrainable and therefore seen as superior to docile animals like dogs and horses. Even insects were subdivided, with honey-producing bees ranked higher than mosquitoes and plant-eating beetles. 
Finally, at the very bottom sat snakes, their lowly station, a result of the serpent's de deception in the Garden of Eden. Even throughout the 20th century, scientists clung to the notion that animals can be neatly ranked by their human intelligence. Scientists devised increasingly cruel experiments that could serve as universal tests for animal cognition, many of them led by University of Wisconsin Madison psychologist Harry Harlow. Previously, Harlow was best known for a series of experiments from the 1950s in which he removed in infant rhesus monkeys from their mothers and provided them surrogate mothers made from wire. The traumatized monkeys' desperate attempts to be caressed by their inanimate mothers during times of stress became the basis for research into maternal separation, dependency needs, and social isolations. Many s historians cite Harlow as a factor in the rise of subsequent animal liberation movements. Later, Harlow developed experiments called learning sets, which effectively tested how well a subject could learn. For instance, an animal would be presented with two doors, one containing food. The test would be repeated until the animal learned the correct door. Much like Arit Aristotle's Scala Naturae, uh, it continues, Animal Kind is the book by Newkirk and Stone.